In order to leave, they hunt and dig. They have no calendar, no plan, no future. They only live for today. Their legacy lies in a bow and an arrow. Meet the Hadzabe tribe, the last Bushman hunters in Africa. In northern Tanzania, on the land of Manyara, Ayasi is in the shadows of the Ngorongoro crater, very close to Olduvai Gorge, one of the most powerful prehistoric sites. Ayasi is countable as a national park in Tanzania. The Hadzabe tribe has lived here for almost 1,000 years. Their survival totally depends on nature through hunting, eating roots, wild honey, and gathering. Their population drops every year due to a number of external factors. Climate changes, which lead to shortage of rain and development of human activities such as farming and livestock herders, affect them. Over the past 50 years, however, the tribe has lost 90% of their land, and now they are estimated to be 250. This is a gathering of the Hadza. They have been living here for a while. It is their home. They spend their daytime under the shades or go out in the wilderness on ranging. In the Hadza community, men hunt while women do domestic chores, taking care of the children and digging roots for food and medicine. The Hadzabe people don't keep count of days, months or years. Most of them don't know their exact age. A boy's age is estimated from the time he starts learning how to hunt. Once he knows, he is estimated to be 10 years old. Hadza girls are taught different types of roots, edible and non-edible, for food and medicine. Once she musters, her age is estimated to be 15 years old, and now she is ready for marriage. Approximately 50 years ago, the Hadza never wore any clothes. Kids stayed naked, while adults were partly covered with animal skin. Today, it is not the same. The government provided clothes and forced them to cover themselves. They make fire by twirling sticks to produce a glowing ember to light dry grass or a bundle of twigs. The whole community, including children, drink alcohol and smoke cannabis, also known as marijuana or weed. They believe it boosts their sanity during the day and keeps them from coldness at night. They hunt all herbivores such as dick dick and buffaloes, trap pythons and monkeys for food. They eat almost all animals except hyenas because hyenas feed on corpses. Bear in mind, the Hadza leave the deceased unburied. It's a sunny afternoon and the men are all set for a hunt. In the Hadza community, a baboon is a very prestigious prey. They hunt enough to sustain the day, and when tomorrow comes, they go hunt again. They aim and shoot a bat, then kill it by biting on its neck. They mostly use reflexes when hunting. They have two types of arrows, arrows for beds, which are made up of sharpened wood, and arrows for animals like baboons, monkeys and buffaloes, made of sharpened iron coated with poison. They take short breaks in between to eat wild berries. Sometimes it takes them more than 6 kilometers to find their favorite hunt, the baboons. They also search for other animals in the bushes like the bush baby.
There is a smell of wild honey here. Someone has to climb to find out. The honey is too deep in the tree to find. So they leave it. There's a need to cross the river to find the baboons on the hills. For hygiene reasons, they banned to drink water from the sauce just like animals as their hands are not clean. Here, they found honey. The Hadzus love wild honey very much. Unlike the traditional method of using smoke to chase out bees, they dip their hands into the hive without caring about being stung by the bees. Neither the baboons nor monkeys are anywhere to be found. They have to go through deep bushes and into the forest to search for their prey. Not a lucky day. The man will go back home with the beds they got. When this happens, the family will only eat roots and berries. Like any other community, the Hata community is not self-sufficient. They trade with the Mangati for tools like arrows and knives in exchange for meat. Yeah, 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 yeah
The Datoga people, also known as the Mangati in Swahili, are agro-pastoral nomadic Nalotic speaking people living near Lake Yassi. They are also excellent iron smiths, whereas houses get iron-crafted hunting tools from them. The Mangati women process flour by crushing maize onto milling stones to produce maize flour. Surviving in the bushes for Hadzabes, you only need the knowledge of roots and hunting. And as the evening grows, they sing and dance around the fire near the baobab tree. They consider the Baobab tree sacred and their god as it gives them water and food. It is what they have chosen to believe in generation after generation.